we've made this video to help you get the best from your classic. Sue will show you how to set up your classic, how to cast on and how to knit some practice knitting. First, push the clamp through the hole at the front of your classic and secure firmly to the table. Do the same with a second clamp, making sure the bottom edge of the classic is level with the front edge of the table. Before we cast on, let's see the different needle positions. Here we have the holding position, forward working position, working position and non-working position. These needle positions will be referred to from now on. The self-adhesive numbers provided should be attached here. Now, let's see how to cast on. Push the needles you want to cast on into holding position. Place the green cards behind the needles to keep them in position. Check that there are equal numbers on either side of the centre zero. Sue is using 60 needles. Line the centre slot of the cast on hem between the centre needles. This is marked with a hole. Lay the hem back on the needle bed. Use the single prong transfer tool to open all the latches of the needles you are casting on. Take either the length of nylon cord or, like Sue, cut a length of shearing elastic and lay it into the open needle hooks. Attach a small clip to each end to weight it down. Make sure the cord or elastic stays in the hook. Fold the hem over and push it right back against the needle bed. Remove the green cards and replace them with the yellow card. Push the needles back against it until they are all in the forward working position. Remove the yellow card. Clip the carriage to the back needle rail. Open the handle and attach the fabric guide, making sure that it goes into the slot on each side of the carriage. Close the carriage handle and your carriage will move freely on the needle bed. Insert key plate number 3 by reopening the handle, inserting the key plate inside the carriage, making sure it fits under the two pips at the back of the carriage. Check that all the latches are open. Use the ball of yarn in the box for your practice knitting. Take out several lengths of yarn from the centre of your ball of yarn. Place the ball on the floor. Thread the carriage through the slot in the handle, down through the eye and round to the back of the fabric guide. Line the eye of the carriage with the first working needle and with your two hands firmly on the handle, take the carriage across. You have now passed on. To tidy up the loose end, take it behind the weighted hem and attach the third clip. Take out the slack at the beginning of the row by holding back the yarn until the eye of the carriage is over the first working needle. Knit the row. Always use two hands on the carriage. Always take the slack out at the beginning of the row. take the slack out at the beginning of the row.
If you don't take up the slack properly, a loop will be formed at the edge of your knitting. Continue knitting in this way for several rows. When the weighted hem reaches your knees, make sure you keep the tension on your knitting by hanging it in front of your knees. Let's see how to increase one stitch at a time. At the beginning of a row, bring forward an extra needle. Check that the latch is open and push it into working position. Knit the row. We have now increased one stitch. Let's see that again. Let's see how to decrease. Using the single prong transfer tool, bring the needle forward and transfer the stitch to the next needle. Push the empty needle into the non-working position. Knit two rows. Pull the needle out and lift the stitch onto the next needle. Note that Sue is holding her knitting back with her other hand and that she is keeping the transfer tool in line with the needle at all times. You can use the three-prong transfer tool in the same way for fully fashioned decrease. Use the three-prong tool to pull out the three end needles. Lift the stitches off and move them in one needle. You now have two stitches on the third needle in from the end. Continue knitting. You have now decreased one stitch fully fashioned. You can decrease on both edges at the same time if you wish. Sue will show you two methods for casting off. Let's begin with a chain stitch cast off. Transfer the end stitch across to the next needle. Bring this needle forward and place the yarn into the hook. Draw the needle back, knitting the two stitches together. Continue casting off your stitches in this way until you have cast off the whole row. So that the cast off edge is not too tight, push the needles well back when knitting to form a large stitch. To help to take the weight of the hem, you can hook up cast-off knitting onto empty needles. At the end of the row, leave sufficient yarn to draw through the last stitch. The second method is the back stitch cast off and is used on finished edges that will be visible. Leaving yarn three times the width of your knitting, cut it off and thread it through a darning needle. Insert the needle into the second stitch, bringing it back through the first stitch. Pull the yarn through. Now into the third stitch and back through the second and so on across the row. When the last stitch is reached, pull the yarn through to fasten off and remove the knitting by bringing all the needles into the hold position and then back into the non-working position.
Now, remove the knitting from the cast-on hem by gently pulling through the nylon cord, or by gently easing the knitting apart and carefully snipping out the elastic as you go. Sue is now going to show you how to put ribbing onto your knitting. Position the same number of needles as your piece of knitting has, so that you have two forward and one back all across the row. Place the yellow card between the needles to keep them in the hold position. Pick up your cast on row of stitches and hook them back onto the needles. To do this, pick up the first two stitches and hang them onto the first two needles in the hold position. Leave the third stitch in the shearing elastic and hook up the fourth and fifth. Continue across your row, hooking up the stitches in this way, leaving every third stitch in the shearing elastic. Remove the yellow card and push the needles back to the working position. Rethread the carriage in the usual way and knit one row. Knit the required number of rows. You now have a series of ladders. With the latch tool down, pick up the stitch that you removed from the needle, turn the hook over and push the stitch behind the latch. As you bring the tool back, hook up the first bar of the ladder. Draw the bar through the stitch. Hook up the remainder of the ladder in the same way. When you reach the top of the ladder, hook the new stitch onto the empty needle. Here Sue is latching up some stitches at the other end at normal speed. Use the back stitch method to cast off. Remove the knitting from the cast-on hem by pulling out the nylon cord or snipping out the shearing elastic. Sue is now going to show you how to knit the basic pattern stitches starting with a lace stitch. Use the transfer tool to transfer one stitch onto its adjacent needle. Bring the empty needle into the hold position. Knit one row. Push the needle back to the forward working position with the latch open. Knit one row. You have now made one lace eyelet. You can continue to make more of these eyelets in this way to make a lace pattern. is making a V-shaped pattern. You can position your lace anywhere on the knitting. Now Sue will show you the tuck stitch. 
This is a very simple stitch which creates texture. Push into the holding position the needles required to carry the tuck. Knit two rows. Pull down on the knitting and push the needles back, checking that the latches are open. Knit one row. Position the needles for the next row of patterns, pushing them into the holding position. Knit two rows. Pull down on the knitting and push the needles back into the forward working position. Knit one row. Continue in this way until you've completed your tuck stitch pattern. With tuck stitch, the reverse side becomes the right side. There are hundreds of tuck stitches you can make. Ferrale is a method of knitting two or more colours in one row, sometimes called jacquard knitting. Bring into the holding position the needles where you require the contrast colour. Sue will knit a contrast colour on every third needle. Always knit the main colour stitches first by taking the carriage across the row. Knit the contrast colour by hand. Make your stitch the same size as the main knitting. After completing the first pattern row, attach a spring clip to the loose contrast end. Select the needles for the second pattern row. Sue is moving one needle to the right to form a diagonal pattern. And this is how the back of the knitting looks with the contrast floats being carried between the pattern stitches. Now Sue will show you how to knit a six stitch cable. Remove onto waste yarn one stitch on each side of the six needles that you are going to use for the cable. Push the empty needle into the non-working position. Using the three-prong transfer tool, remove the three right-hand stitches and hook the tool onto a needle like this. Now using the second transfer tool, transfer the three left-hand stitches onto the three empty needles. Then transfer the other three stitches across to the three needles on the left. You have now twisted a cable. Push the six needles into the forward working position, making sure that the latches are open. Bring forward an extra needle on each side to make it easier to knit the next row. Knit six rows. Repeat the crossing over of the stitches every sixth row, just like this.
Latch up the ladder using the latch tool. Note how Sue is holding down the knitting with her other hand. For a long cable, you'll find it easier to latch up the ladder in stages every third or fourth cable. When you reach the top of the ladder, hook the stitch onto the empty needle. Do the same with the second ladder. This is what the cable looks like from the right side. Now Sue will show you how to knit intarsia or picture knitting. For intarsia, you'll need to remove the fabric guide and the yarn from the carriage. Using one of the cards, bring all the needles into the forward working position, making sure all the latches are open. Place the main colour yarn into the needle hooks that you want to carry that colour. And the contrast colour yarn into the needle hooks that you want to carry the contrast colour. Hold onto the loose ends and take the carriage slowly across to knit the row. Position the needles for the second row, bringing them into the forward working position, making sure all the latches are open. Bring the yarns back in the opposite direction and moving one needle to the right, but this time twist the yarn under the needle hook where the colours join. This prevents a hole. Hold on to the loose ends and bring the carriage slowly across making sure you don't pull too tightly on the loose ends of the yarn. Let them feed evenly through your fingers. Continue positioning your needles into the forward working position, placing the yarn into the open hooks and twisting the yarn where the colours join. Sue is using two colours for her practice piece of knitting, but you can use as many colours as you want to on any row. Remember, don't hold the yarn too tightly, as this will prevent the carriage from knitting. To close the hole at the beginning, use the latch tool to pull the loose end of yarn through the crossover stitch. Alternatively, you may like to purchase our Intarsia key plate, one adjustable key plate for all the key plate sizes. Using this key plate, you do not need to remove the fabric guide or hold the yarns. The Intarsia key plate brings your needles automatically into the forward working position with the latches open, ready for you to lay in your coloured yarns. This makes intarsia knitting even faster. Here is our basic diagonal design. If you have had any problems knitting your practice piece, this next section has been designed to help you. A jammed carriage usually means that a needle is out of line, and there it is. Gently pulling down on the knitting will usually release that needle. The main cause for a needle jam in the key plate is knitting too quickly. Once the needle has been released, you can replace your handle and continue knitting.
Should you need to unravel the row, do this by pulling the yarn sideways and lifting it out of the needle hooks back to the start of the row. Check that the stitches are either in the hooks or behind open latches. Move the carriage to the start of the row and with the key plate back in, you are ready to proceed. A drop stitch is easy to pick up. Use the transfer tool to pick up the drop stitch and put it back on the empty needle. Push the needle forward so the stitch is behind the latch. Pick up the bottom loop and put it back onto the hook. Knit the stitch through. Do exactly the same with the second loop. Pull the knitting down. When you've knitted your garment pieces, it is important that they are sewn together correctly. Often garments are spoilt because they've been badly sewn together. Because Bond feel this is as important as the knitting, they've produced the Sew Easy and recommend its use when sewing up knitwear. To produce your professional seam, place your pieces of knitting on the Sew Easy, which holds them in a perfect position. Then you just sew between the stitches. By following these simple instructions for knitting and finishing, you'll be able to create the garments in the basic pattern book. With a little practice, you'll soon be producing garments like these. Mm -hmm.